Hi everyone, welcome back to GAT Academy 2022. Today's topic is grand writing tools. Today's expert is Lindsay DeSantis. Lindsay is the new executive director for GAP. So before we start with Lindsay's um, session today, we would like to thank our sponsors, AstraZeneca, Sanofi Genzyme Regeneron, Novartis, and GSK for making this possible. So I'll pass it to you, Lindsay. My name is Lindsay DeSantis, and I'm the executive director for the Global Allergy and Airways Patient Platform. Today, I'll be reviewing some grant writing basics, writing your proposal, some helpful tools and resources, as well as funding opportunities. Let's get started with grant writing basics. Your first step, and likely the easiest, is to identify the significant need or problem to be addressed. For example, improving the understanding of disease diagnosis and treatment options for patients and caregivers. Next, you'll propose the answer to the need and make sure your proposal includes details of the program or project for change. For example, the organization will partner with healthcare providers to provide education programs that will enhance patient and caregiver knowledge on diagnosis and treatment of the disease. Again, the program details, your frequency and the location should also be included. Creating your budget is a vital step in this process, and we'll discuss this in more detail later in the presentation. You also want to be very specific about your goals, objectives, and outcomes, and we'll really drill down deeper into this throughout the presentation. And always follow the exact specifications set by the grant makers in their application process or their request for proposals and their guidelines. Grants are highly competitive, and if you don't follow the instructions in the beginning, it will likely cause an automatic denial and the reviewer may not even approach your proposal. Writing your proposal. I'll now go over the basics of writing a proposal. However, there will be some grant applications that are done entirely online and will provide you the detailed steps of the information required. What I'm providing below are, is a guide that will be helpful in identifying the information you'll need to complete most grant processes. Each grant maker will have specific criteria. However, these items will be needed. First is your cover letter or your executive summary. This is to provide the re reviewers a background and understanding of your organization and its purpose. It's important to remember that this letter is to secure funding for the specific project versus the organization itself. So this information should be brief. You'll also want to provide a summary of the purpose of the program or project to be funded. The tone of the letter is important. It should be simple and concise. It's easy to write extensively about an issue we're passionate about, but the cover letter should only include basic information and the necessary details. The next paragraph should explain your reasons for seeking money, the funding amount, and why your organization requires this support. Finally, as you close your cover letter, highlight the community that will be impacted by this project and extend your gratitude for their consideration. Always ensure you sign the cover letter and it appears on your organizational letterhead with clear contact information on how to reach you. I would recommend using Grammarly, which is a free tool that provides recommendations for online grammar and spell checking, as well as writing clarity. Some other areas of your proposal, which we'll get to in more depth, are creating your need statement, your goals and objectives, your implementation plan, the outcome and evaluation and how you measure your program or project, your budget and fundraising requirements, your organizational qualifications, the conclusion, as well as any additional requirements by the funder. This can include your tax exempt status, your organizational or financial documentation, list of your board of directors, leadership, or staff. Developing your needs st statement is an important part of this process. Your needs statement is your opportunity to express the importance and need for the funding request. 
conducting research on the topic to provide facts from experts and any emerging healthcare data will support your goals. Use simple, uncomplicated language without complex scientific terms, which will help ensure the reviewer understands the information provided. Also include real life examples, perhaps from patients from your organization. This can help connect the funder to the impact on the community to be addressed. It's also important to understand who your funder is and their goals and missions to help align your funding requests. By investing in your pro project, the funder should feel they are also advancing their mission. Developing your goals and objectives. Goals are broad statements you wish to accomplish, but they're difficult to measure. Goals are essentially the desired outcome of your program or project. An objective is the steps needed taken to achieve those goals. Objectives are narrow and measurable. Your goals and objectives should complement each other. So I've given some example below. Your goal to improve understanding of disease diagnosis and treatment options for patients and caregivers. This is what you hope to accomplish. The objectives are the how, providing monthly education sessions to patients and caregivers, partnering with healthcare providers to increase access to education and awareness. Another objective to meet this goal would be to promote awareness on social media. A tip to note is to really bring attention to grant reviewers. Use words as such as improve, establish, increase, produce, really showing the productivity of that goal. Your implementation plan is next. This is using your identified goals to serve as a timeline for the task to complete your project. So you'll have your goals and objectives, specific tasks outlined, the roles and responsibility of the key team players, any necessary research resources or budgets that will impact your implementation plan. And I would recommend the utilization of project management tools in this step. There are a lot of free options such as Asana and Trello. Those are two free project management software tools that will really help organize your project plan. The next is measuring success. There are a number of ways to measure success, but as related to this specific uh, topic, uh, a program attendance reporting, how many people attended your program, how, what was your reach, um, a survey of participants, following the conclusion of the program, as well as website and social media engagements. It's easier than ever to track metrics of who has visited your website, how many clicks, um, how many visits a social media engagement has had, how many, what, what the specific metrics are. You can really see how broad your reach was for a specific campaign. Budget planning is the most crucial part of the process and can be incredibly overwhelming and daunting. So we've tried to break it down into these categories. And at the end of the presentation, I will also provide a, a, some resources where you'll be able to actually download a copy of this grant budget template um, that will be easy for you to translate into for your own uses. So what I've done is I've broken it down into some very simple categories um, that are applicable to most of the grant process. So the first is your personnel. This is solely for the employees of your organization. Anything for contractors would be included under the separate category of contractual expenses. The travel is, is specifically travel necessary for performance of the project. For example, if there were um, an exhibit booth at a, another meeting, a large meeting, and to bring awareness to a specific campaign, all the travel necessary to attend that meeting would be listed here um, or anything specific to the project. Equipment and supplies, um, it's usually broken down that equipment is valued at anything over 5,000 and supplies valued at anything under 5,000. Supplies are generally consumed during the project performance. 
So this could be something as simple as paper, um, office supplies, where equipment can, is, is larger level and it would be used for longer than the life of the project. Supplies are usually within one year where equipment is one and a half years or longer. Um, you would just briefly justify the need for the supplies as they apply to the scope of your work. Next, you'll have your contractual expenses. This is related to all your vendors and contractors, and you should include any cost estimates or quotes that you've received. Then we have direct costs, and these are items required for the project which may not fit in any of the other categories we've discussed. Examples could be tuition, outside printing costs outside of your organization, anything that can be charged directly to the project but isn't duplicated in indirect or overhead costs. And those indirect costs are the expenses of doing business that are not readily identified with a particular grant, contract, or project. This includes organizations' rent, your employer's portion of payroll taxes, phone bills, and just general management and accounting that may not be directly involved in the specific project, but is a part of the running of the organization that is impacted in the administrator of the grant. Finally, there is the cost share, which is the list of the cash or the cash value, and it's also known as the match. Cash cost share, it's all the contributions to the project made by the recipient for costs incurred and paid for during the project. This can include when an organization pays for personnel, supplies, or equipment for your own company with your organizational resources. If the item or the service is reimbursed, it's a cash cost share. All cost share items must be necessary to the performance of the project. Your in-kind cost share are all the contributions to the project made by a vendor, not your organization, that represent donated items or services. These items can include, but aren't limited to, your volunteer personnel hours, donated existing equipment or donated supplies. The cash value of those contributions must be justified and explained in the cost share item. All cost share items must be necessary to the performance of the project. All contributions of personnel, supplies, equipment, and other items by the applicant are considered cash. So one of the things that's very important in the budget planning process is, is really identifying all of the costs. And the personnel costs are such a crucial part, and they're often overlooked. So it's really important to make sure that you value the time of your human resource in your budget planning process. Some helpful tools and resources include Smartsheet grants. Um, you'll be able to download free proposal templates. So using some of the information you received today, you'll also be able to use these sheets um, so it, it's you have the correct format. Also, a great website is learngrantwriting.org. Um, they are the source of the budgeting template that you saw in the slide prior. And as I mentioned before, Grammarly is a fantastic resource to ensure that your writing is clear and concise, the spelling is correct, as well as the grammar. And the, uh, as well as project management tools, Asano and Trello, are great for your implement, implementation plan and your timeline. Um, they can really provide those resources to keep an organization on track, especially if you have limited resources and, and staff. We have a, there's a number of funding opportunities throughout the world, and it's specific on your loca in your location. There is the American Thoracic Society grants, um, the EU grants, 80% of EU grants are through the government. There's also the Netherlands Albert Schweitzer Fund, and it aims to support initiatives on the path for Africans to a full life. It provides initial grants, donations for direct projects in Africa. It's focused on the development of effective, sustainable, and accessible healthcare or directly related subjects. 
Um, the Community Enterprise Foundation is, is, is out of Australia. United Nations Development Fund is an opportunity, as well as local and regional governments, as well as your professional patient advocacy organizations. Both GAP and Global Skin offer funding opportunities. GAP offers our member op organizations the opportunity to submit grants that will fund up to 25% of your project budget. All we require is that the additional 75% 75, 75 have been funded already and our board reviews these twice a year. Um, we are happy to provide any of the support letters that may be required for your grant process. Um, essentially, GAP will be a support tool in your grant writing process. Thank you for joining us today for GAP Academy and thank you to our GAP Academy sponsors once again. We created GAP Academy for our member organizations based on the feedback we received from you. If there's a potential topic you wanna to learn more about in the future, please contact us at GAP at info at gap.org. That's info at G-A-A-P-P.org. Again, my name is Lizzie DeSantis and I'm the Executive Director for GAP. If I can answer any questions about the grant process for you or provide any support, please feel free to contact me directly at ldesantis at gaapp.org. That's ldesantis at gap.org. I look forward to the opportunity to support you and your organization's mission. Thank you so much for supporting GAP.